I know thy works and tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. Welcome to the Black Excellence and Abundance Channel. In 1706, an enslaved West African man was purchased by an enslaver, Cotton Mather. He was a Puritan and a minister. Yes, folks, a minister who was also a slaver. Be that as it may. In 1716, an enslaved West African man by the name Onesimus told his enslaver something he did not believe that he knew how to prevent smallpox. Onesimus suggested a potential way to keep people from getting sick from smallpox. But of course, Cotton Mather did not believe that the cure could come from this black man, nor did he trust him. When it was discovered that smallpox had made its way to Boston and was spreading rapidly, it was terrifying to the colonies in Massachusetts. Hundreds of residents of the busy and crowded colonial town had started to flee for their lives, frightened of what might happen if they exposed themselves to this frequently deadly disease. They had good reason to fear. The virus was extremely contagious, spreading like wildfire in large epidemics. But the smallpox epidemics of 1721 was different than any that came before it as sickness swept through the city killing hundreds in a time before modern medical treatment had an understanding of infectious diseases. Smallpox was one of the era's deadliest afflictions. Few diseases at this time were as universal or fatal, notes historian Susan Pryor. The colonists saw its effect not just among their own countrymen, but among the Native Americans to whom they introduced the disease. This deadly disease destroyed Native communities that with no immunity were unable to fight off the virus. It wasn't until a Boston advertisement for a cargo of about 250 enslaved people recently arrived from Africa circa 1700, particularly stressed that the enslaved people are free of the smallpox, having been quarantined on the ship. The news caught the attention of Mather. Intrigued by Onesimus' idea, Dr. Zablia Boyston and Mather began listening to Onesimus and used the method he suggested to try to stop the smallpox in his tracks. Mather was fascinated. He verified Onesimus' story with that of other enslaved people and learned that the practice had been used in Turkey and China. He became an evangelist for inoculation, also known as variolation, and spread the word throughout Massachusetts and elsewhere in the hopes it would help prevent smallpox. Onesimus, who is a pretty intelligent fellow, wrote Cotton Mather, told him he had smallpox and then he had it. Onesimus said that he had undergone an operation which had given him something of the smallpox and would forever preserve him from it. And whoever had the courage to use it was forever free of the fear of contagion. The operation Onesimus referred to consisted of rubbing pus from an infected person into an open wound on the arm. Once the infected material was introduced into the body, the person who underwent the procedure was inoculated against smallpox. It wasn't a vaccination which involves exposure to a less dangerous virus to provoke immunity, but it did activate the recipient's immune response and protect it against the disease most of the time. But Martha 
hadn't bargained on how unpopular the idea would be. The same prejudices that caused him to distrust his servant made other white colonists reluctant to undergo a medical procedure developed by or for black people. A local newspaper at the time, called the New England Corrient, ridiculed him. An explosive device was thrown through his window with an angry note. There was an ugly racial element to the anger. Religion also contributed. Other preachers argued that it was against God's will to expose his creatures to dangerous diseases. But in 1721, Mather and Dr. Boyleston, the only physician in Boston who supported the technique, got their chance to test the power of inoculation. That year, he inoculated his son and his enslaved workers against the disease. Then he began inoculating other Bostonians. Of the 242 people he inoculated, only six died, one in 40. As opposed to the one in seven deaths among the population of Boston who didn't undergo the procedure. The smallpox epidemic wiped out 844 people in Boston, over 14% of the population, but it had yielded hope for future epidemics. It also helped to set the stage for vaccination. It is unclear if Onesimus lived to see the success of the techniques he introduced to Matha. What is clear is that this procedure saved hundreds of lives. And this little known black man from Africa had a huge success on the development of vaccinations that we still use to this day. And a footnote. In 1980, the World Health Organization declared smallpox entirely eradicated due to the spread of immunization worldwide. It remains the only infectious disease to have been entirely wiped out in no small part due to the contributions of Onesimus. So you see, ladies and gentlemen, we were at the forefront of the science of inoculations, which led to the vaccinations that are used today. Thank you, brother Onesimus. The Black Excellence and Abundance Channel, where black history is every day. Thanks for watching. Please remember to like, comment, share, and subscribe. And remember, thou art rich.